Do you want your Sims 4 game to go from looking like this to this or this or this? Then keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to show you how to download and use G-Shade for The Sims 4. I've seen a few comments asking me how to use Reshade, what settings I use, what presets I use, so I will unwrap all of this in today's video. So stick around if you want to know more. Now, if you ever wondered how people get their game looking super aesthetic with like blurred background and all of that stuff, that is what G-Shade does. Now a little disclaimer, G-Shade and Reshade unfortunately cannot be used on Mac or Xbox so it will only work if you're playing Sims on a PC or on Windows and I know it can sound complicated at first how to like install it all the shaders and presets and stuff but it's actually super easy once you get a hang of it I promise I'll try to make it super easy to follow so first things first we need to download G Shade to do that we just need to go to the official G Shade website I'll leave a link in the description below so you don't have to go hunting for it just click the button for Windows and don't worry it's free so we just go ahead and download it now that it is done you can go to your downloads folder and find this installer over here now once we click on it and it opens up it's going to ask you which language you prefer so you pick over here from the languages that are present so i will click english then agree to terms and conditions now because i already had g shade installed but i'm reinstalling it now for the purpose of this video basically over here you need to detect where your sims 4 game actually is for me it's shows the sims 4 right here and then it will show where it is installed for me but in case it doesn't work for you an easy way to find your game folder is if you go and locate your sims 4 icon and then just right click it and go to open file location it will literally just show you the path of where your game is installed so you can just press on it Control c go ahead and click browse paste the location of the game and then you need the the sims 4 x 64 application file so you will just open that and then G Shade will just know what game you actually want to use it for. Then we click next and we have the required settings here. So for this one, I literally don't change anything. It's 64 bit DirectX 11. And that is if you're using the updated DirectX 11 for the Sims. If not, then you would probably need DirectX 9 for it. But I'm just showing it for the way my game works. And then I'm keeping everything else as it is. So nothing clicked on here and just the tick boxes over here. Then you press install and wait for G shade to install into your computer now that the setup is finished it's going to ask you where you want your screenshots to be saved to now i have a dedicated folder for it and you can make your own as well but the default would be in your pictures folder but basically for me i have specific screenshots folder for sims because it just makes it easier to locate and now that we are done it says the folder for your screenshot was successfully set would you like to open a g-shake quick reference now you can go ahead and do that if you want to but i don't really want to do that so i'm just going to click no. Now that we have installed it, it's time to download and install our presets. So the one I'm using right now in my Euro Summer series is Boho Dreams, a reshade preset by Nixul. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but this is it. And this is basically the difference. So this is the EA version, and this is how the game would look like with a reshade. So really vibrant colors, which we love for summer vibes. And the way you would download is basically we locate the download button and you have the INI file. So we hit download and sometimes depending on your browser, you might get a notification being like, oh, like suspicious download. I, I wouldn't worry about that because I get it all the time, but I haven't detected any viruses or anything by downloading the preset. So once you have this preset downloaded, what you need to do is go ahead and locate your game folder once again. So we open file location and then you can see that we have two new folders in this location. So we have a G shade add-ons and G shade presets. What you're going to do is open G shade presets custom. And then all you do is just drag your downloaded preset into this folder. And that's it. That is literally it. Now your preset should be already downloaded and ready to use. What we're going to do now is launch the Sims 4 to actually check if we have done everything correctly. Now we have booted up the game and usually you would get a pop-up saying that your G shade has been installed and it will tell you the key you need to press in order to launch the G-Shade settings menu. So it could be like control backspace or something like that. Now that the game has loaded, say hello to Henry and Sophia looking super cute. I just want to show you that wow effect of when you actually see the reshade. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. Please, like, what do you mean? 
look at the color difference look at how crisp everything looks now let me actually go ahead and show you the settings so once you figured out what the key binding is to open the settings menu for g-shade you're gonna press on it and this is what you're gonna see what you're gonna want to do with the installed preset you're gonna go ahead click custom and pick the one that you downloaded so for me it's boho dreams and it automatically already puts all the shaders that you need for this preset okay now let me quickly explain to you what some of these shaders actually do we are going to be taking an example of the boho dreams and i'll run you through the ones that i have turned on for this so we're going to start with color and tone effects so for these ones it's it's these three starting off with the dpx it basically adds a subtle cinematic movie color grade. It tweaks the RGB channels, as you can see here, contrast and saturation to give your game a warmer or moodier vibe. And you can tweak it around here to the way you like it if you want to. I don't really want to just like that. Then we have a filmic pass and it tweaks the brightness and contrast, saturation and all of that good stuff. So again, you can tweak that and uh, change the way it looks. You can also change the, the color that it gives you so the color of the effect just like that and then for the last one we have technicolor and this one boosts the color saturation and shifts the tone slightly again we can tweak this one up and well this is a bit dramatic but you get the gist of it and then you can also tweak the colors if you want to now for the lights and shadows so we have adaptive sharpen which is pretty straightforward it just sharpens up your game so let me put it on and if i toggle this you can see how sharp and crispy the characters become come and depending on your vibe you can adjust that how you want so you can like adjust anything you want within these presets to your liking now another great shaders that you can use is mxao or quint mxao now these make your game look absolutely insane like look at the look at it it's so beautiful isn't it so what these shaders do is they basically add shadows into your game and make it look this good but the problem with them is is they're very gpu heavy meaning that your game will absolutely lag i personally do not play with mxao on because my game lags like there's no tomorrow like it's so bad i'll show you so i don't know if you can notice the difference but it is much slower to move it and my gpu is like on fire right now <laughs> so i wouldn't recommend playing with it unless you have like another level gpu that can handle mxao the problem with mxao is that it rate like it traces the shadows every second so it obviously takes a lot of the power on gpu to do it so what i do with the mxao on is i usually take pictures so i take screenshots with it on so i would pause the game take a screenshot and then i would take the mxao off for the gameplay it, it looks beautiful though like i absolutely love mxao like i wish i had <laughs> i wish i had a gpu that could handle it now another cool preset is adof which blurs the background love it for the cinematic scenes or for screenshots of Obviously, I don't recommend using it while you're playing the game because it's just it's going to look a bit weird. It's going to take time to realize what should be in focus and what should not. Obviously, you can if you want to, but it's not my cup of tea. So I usually turn it off for gameplay and turn it on for cinematics or for screenshots. Now, the settings for depth of field, um, you can take a screenshot of my settings. So the two most important ones that you would need to adjust depending on what you want in focus are the uh, near blue curve and far blue curve so what does a far blue curve mean you see the background so i want my foreground to be in focus and my background to be blurred and this is what i do so if i slide it to the left it becomes less focused and if i slide it to the right it becomes more focused so you can adjust the blur depending on what you need to be blurred and what you need to be in focus and then for example if i want them to be blurred and i want the focus on the background i would go to near blue curve drag it to the left and then drag the far blur curve to the right so now you can see that henry and sophia are unfocused and the background is focused so there you go that is the depth of field now the fx say over here in simple terms it basically smooths out the jagged edges so if you want the fx say mxao depth of field or any dof variant you will need to do this you will need to make sure that you go into your 
game options and you need to turn off your edge smoothing otherwise the filter the, sh the shaders are going to get confused and it will all look wonky and not nice so make sure that edge smoothing is off if you're using those shaders and make sure that post-processing effects are on now onto the settings within this that can just make your life easier so here we have if you just press settings we have a few keys that we can bind to make our life easier so for the overlay key in case you have like a shift backspace or space backspace whatever <laughs> whatever it gave you you can switch it to what you want and what feels better for you for me i bind it to my home key and whenever i press it this menu will pop up now for the shader toggle key i have it on this i have no idea what it means but it's basically one key below escape and that is what toggles the effect on and off for me see uh just better if i need to turn off the whole preset at once now for the screenshot we have our path already defined when we installed this g shade but you also need to bind the screenshot key so for me it's f12 whenever i press f12 uh, i take a screenshot of my sims so very useful for you to bind these keys another things that i have binded to keys is the some of the shaders so for example for depth of field i have it on shift and f5 so whenever i don't have to like manually click it i just can go like this with my keyboard and then it's done the same with mxao and quit mxao i just press caps lock and it toggles it on and off without me having to go onto this menu i would also recommend to put the performance mode on it basically as you can see it says it disables shader settings menu but gives a slight fps boost and significantly decreases preset load time so it's just better for your performance really because again depending on what presets and what shaders you use it will impact the performance of the game but again you can toggle things on and off for example if i turn a few things off like adaptive sharpen and uh, curves like you can decrease the load on your gpu this way and also obviously you can again tweak any preset that you like and into any color that you want and as you can see just customize it to your liking and now i just want to show you some of the different presets that i have in the game the ones that i downloaded so let's just quickly go through them so we have this one choco vibes i love that i mean i personally would tweak some of the things probably a little bit because uh it's a bit too sharp for my liking but i think it's still super nice and crispy next up we have this one um Irias by riv zai again i would probably remove like a few of the lighting shaders that actually looks quite good i like that another one of really beautiful presets is pearl by amelie look at how cute it looks it's so buttery i absolutely love that then we have ember by fantasia again i personally would remove a few like shaders from here just also to remove the load from <laughs> from my graphics card but again love that we have rose milk tea by melixa then radiance by miss lollipop sims so cute white willow by tiana berry really really nice preset here again the thing about presets is that you can customize them to your liking which i absolutely love so there you go these are some of very beautiful presets that i have found and downloaded and if you're interested in downloading them as well you can find them in the link down below i think this is it for this little tutorial on how to install and use g shade and the settings that i have as well as preset that i use for my euro summer series i hope it was useful for you guys and let me know what presets you want to try out and if you found this tutorial useful i would be very very grateful i hope you're having a lovely week and i will see you guys very very soon bye